Well, I, it's funny that I, I came from a family in which uh, neither one of my parents had a higher education. They finished high school and that was it. No, no university. They weren't readers of books. There were very few books in the house. Um, <coughs> but I grew up in a town with a good public library and I would go and get books out and read them. And from around the time of eight or so, I can remember being actively interested in reading books, particularly uh, fiction and also biographies. I read a lot of these little biographies written for children, you know, Joan of Arc or Abraham Lincoln or, you know, any one of these historical figures. And, um, uh, and I seem to remember that when I was around nine, I, uh, I wrote my first poem. I was walking along, it was a Saturday, and I was all by myself, and I was wandering through this little town, walking through a park, and uh, it was spring, and it was really pretty out. Maybe it was the first beautiful day of the year, and I remember how happy it made me feel. And um, so I kept on walking into the town, and I bought a, uh, a pen and a notebook. And I went back to the park, and I sat down and I wrote a poem about spring. Now, I think it's probably the worst poem ever written. I mean, it was absolutely stupid. And, um, but I, <clears throat> I felt more alive doing this than any other activity. I felt more connected to the world by looking closely at it and trying to write about it. And it, it created a very good feeling. And then I kept trying to write as a child <coughs> stories, you know, imitating people like Robert Louis Stevenson. I liked him. So I, I would write, you know, absurd things like, in the year of our Lord, 1751, I was wandering in a raging snowstorm looking for the house of my ancestors. You know, this, this kind of stuff, adventure stories. Um, but I liked it, and I liked the tone of uh, Stevenson and Poe, I, I, I liked also. And Sherlock Holmes, Conan Doyle, I, I, those were the writers I really enjoyed as a boy. Because I wasn't really capable of reading much else. Um, <clears throat> a good example would be when I was 11, right? It's 1958. Boris Pasternak wins the Nobel Prize. And it was a big deal in the press because the Russians, the Soviet Union, would not allow him to go to Stockholm to accept the prize. So it was a big um, moment in the Cold War. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, right around that time, uh, an English translation of Dr. Zhivago was published. And I'm only 11 years old, and I think to myself, I have to read this book because this is supposed to be great literature. And I really have never read great literature, but maybe this is a chance to start. So I think it was the second book I ever bought with my own money. I had my Edgar Allan Poe. And um, I bought Dr. Zhivago. I think it was $3.95. Big fat book, and I start reading it, and I didn't understand what I was reading. It made no sense to me. I remember there were some people standing in the rain at a funeral, and I, I, I read it again, the first page. I, I still couldn't follow it. And I thought, well, maybe if I go to the second page to see what what's going on, and I still couldn't follow it. And after trying and trying and trying. I closed the book and I put it away. I couldn't do it. I wasn't ready. The funny thing is, I've never read Dr. Zhivago. <laughs> I never went back. I've read a lot of other Pasternak, his poetry, but I never read that book. <laughs>